Thank you. Hi, welcome to Rockdown. I'm Wendy Stapleton. As we've mentioned before, there are guitarists and there are guitarists. Some of them are brilliant rhythm players who help provide the important feel in the context of a song. Then there are classical players who are so polished they play all the parts. But the 60s and the 70s spawned those who played solos with such feel and soul that they became our guitar heroes. And one such hero who still to this day receives standing ovations is Phil Manning. Hi Phil, how are you? Yeah, great Wendy. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, of course you are one of our amazing rock guitar heroes. Uh, but you don't become a guitar hero overnight. And I presume that uh, you don't just play guitar, you're a multi-instrumentalist? Oh, no, pretty much just a guitar player. I, I started out, I did eight years classical piano as a child. Uh, but by the time I was 14, I had really had enough of it. I was really over it. You know, all, all my mates would want to play cricket and I'd be sitting inside practicing. practicing you know. And you know, I, I eventually, when the Beatles and the Stones turned up, I was gone. And uh, it took me about a year to talk my father into letting me get a guitar and giving up piano. And, and remarkably, I gave up piano and forgot everything I'd learnt in about 18, 18 months later. I couldn't Isn't play it Isn't that weird? I just, I, I just do hit the delete button, you know, I think, in my, in my brain. Mm. Um, so and so starting to play guitar, was I had to start from scratch. Um, and there was, there was not much in the way of instructional books or anything around at that time. So it was really a matter of listening to records, playing along with records, and basically having this ridiculous passion for it, where every waking moment I'd play guitar, you know. So you're from Tassie? Yeah, I'm from Tasmania, yeah. Where, whereabouts was it? Devonport. Your grandfather, evidently, was he a... A musician. A he musician. Was a, he was a brass band leader and player. He played all the brass instruments. And he joined the band, the La Trobe Federal Band, I think. He, I worked, he must have been 13 or 19, I, I'm not sure. He was in the band for 20 years, then he led it for 46 years. And then, and then after he retired, he was band leader emeritus for another 10. So he was actually in the one band for 76 years. How old was he when he... Is he still with you? No, no, he died at 89. That is <laughs> incredible. Yeah, well, he got the MBE for it. Is that right? Yeah. What's his name? Luke what Coventry. Name? Luke Coventry, yeah, so MBE. My, my mum's father, yeah. That's wonderful. And was your mum musical? Uh, well, she played piano and she was in the church choir and... It, 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 there's 13 aunties, well, mum and 12 other aunties and one son, so it was a big family. And they all played piano or sang. Uh, and, um, yeah, so there's quite a lot of, like, my, both my sisters and my brother are piano players. And you know. <laughs> I can see why you dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to be different, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. So how old again were you when you took up guitar 12? No, 15. 15. Mm -hmm. And started playing. Well, I started band playing, and... strumming a few chords, trying to learn Beatles songs, then trying to work out Keith Richards' licks, and um, and then gradually discovered blues music. And because we formed band, a couple of bands at school, and I went off to art college. Uh, I was going to be in, uh, do an art teacher course. And basically, I loved the art, but I hated the university side of it. The, the education 1A or whatever it was we had to do. And after about eight months, um, Tony Worsley came through Hobart and I'd read in one of the uh, music magazines that Vince Maloney had just left his band, the Blue Jays, to go join the Bee Gees. So I knew that Tony was l lacking a guitar player. So I just fronted up and said I'd like to apply for the job and he heard me play in the dressing room and two days later I was in Melbourne. So what style of music was that? Mainly. Blues, well, Tony, Tony had had his hits with things like Velvet Waters and um, uh, the Buddy Holly thing, Raining in My Heart. Uh, so yeah. we did those sort so, of sort things. Of, and pop, sort of pop. Yeah, and yeah. soul. So soul, he, yeah. he really loved, like, you know, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding, that sort of stuff. And bit by bit, partially through my influence, we started doing some John Mayall type thing, you know. Yeah. So it, it sort of um, gradually altered 
It, it evolved it itself. Evolved, yeah. yeah. And so after that... After that I joined, came down to Melbourne and joined the Bay City Union, which of course had Glenn Wheatley in it, uh, and of course Matt Taylor was the singer. Oh, really? So that's how I, Matt and I started our long association. And Glenn was still being a manager in those days. He'd get up in the morning and put his shirt and tie on and go out in our old beat-up VW and try and round up gigs for the Bay City Union. So he was always always yeah. the one that was yep. sort of organising the things and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So what year did you form Chain? Chain formed in 1968. Um, I went from Melbourne over to Perth for a time to join the Beaten Tracks. Uh, their guitarist Dave Hole had just left. And then we came back to Melbourne and at that stage, in that matter of a few months of being in Perth, the whole Melbourne scene suddenly was uprooted and it went from being that pop, very pop thing to the underground. You know, suddenly people were starting to play more in the lines of, of traffic or cream yeah. or, or, you know, the, the, more that, that British sort of thing. So, um, OK, so you came back to Melbourne. Mm -hmm. After this band in Perth, yeah, together. and uh, we got Wendy Saddington as our singer, and she came up with the name Chain from ah, from Aretha, she? yeah, from Aretha Franklin's Chain of Fools, and I think it was very well named. <laughs> we went through quite a few different lineups uh, and different different styles. Really, uh, we, w we went from being a very organ based band with Warren Morgan and then later on Claude Papish. Yeah. Uh, and then we went to a, being a piano based band with Warren, uh, with Glyn Mason on guitar as well as me. Uh, then Warren joined the Aztecs, Glyn went overseas and it left uh, Barry Sullivan, Barry Harvey and myself as a trio for a while. Known as Big uh, Goose and Little Goose. Big Goose and Little Goose. And then we went to Brisbane for a while and invited Matt to come up. I, uh, we decided we needed a singer. I, I wanted to concentrate on guitar rather than sort of front the band and and I, I just didn't figure I was a good enough singer anyway. And uh, so we got Matt and our first rehearsal we wrote Black and Blue. When Matt came up to join us in Brisbane he said, listen guys, uh, I found this young guy in Melbourne that would be really great to manage us. He's just working as one of the office boys sort of things at Ambo at the moment. His name's Michael Godinsky. So Michael became our manager. Okay. And uh, We'll take a short break because this is a very, very interesting idea and I've been waiting to meet someone to ask actually how Michael started up. Yeah. Um, we'll take a, a break and be back soon with Phil Manning. Rock down. Welcome back to Rock Down. My special guest this evening is the one and only Phil Manning. And, Phil, we were just at a very interesting point uh, in our conversation where you all came back to Melbourne and found yourselves a manager, a young young man. A young Michael Godinsky, yes, How indeed. old was he? I think he must have been 19, I think. And had he been managing... Because I, I really wanted to ask people this question... I know Michael, we all know mm. Michael, but everyone said that he used to just have this station wagon and drive everyone round frantically. In fact, how did he sort of go from being, what did you say, like a, well, an office boy? Or? I don't remember the station wagon. That must have been later because mm. he had a, a, white for, a, a white Valiant. You know, the gorgeous old Valiants that have got the... Uh, the, on the on the boot of them that's got the outline of the oh, spare yeah. tire. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. one. He had one of those. Um, no, I mean, and he became our manager, and uh, you know, as managers do, he was taking his twenty percent of the band, and uh, and we suddenly found ourselves working five and six nights a week. And I only realised this is a marvelous thing. I only realised the other day. One of the things that he did. Uh, was he'd, he would, he got into promoting dances as well. So he'd be running the dances, hiring the bands, some of which he managed, uh, and getting his... Uh, so the bands were all out there, he did, doing all the handbills of the promotion. But what he did with Chain, and this is just marvellous, I saw one that said Chain at the Box Hill Town Hall or something, 
A dollar fifty to get in includes a free single. So for the door charge, people would get their copy of Black and Blue. Ah. And so Black and Blue was suddenly just selling. See, who's clever then? <laughs> so, you know, that was marvellous, wasn't it? And some people just have the knack. Michael's always had the knack of yeah, actually... Yeah. Um... Yeah, he was very clever. And, mm. uh, and of course, Chain was... We were just such rat bags. The band, that, the band that had Black and Blue only lasted for 11 months. And after 11 months, we were all burned out and stoned. Yeah. And, and, and hated each other. And... Yeah, yeah. But the thing is that that, that really did set Chain up for a, oh, yeah. a very long career. And as a matter of fact, to this day, you're still touring. Mm, oh yeah, yeah. We we still we still tour, and, and it uh, it's remarkable how after all this time, you know, Matt and I work really well together. We enjoy each other's company, and you know, because you get older, and all of the little because the thing that used to happen with me, I found in the early days of Chain was it was such a twenty four hour a day thing when you're in a band. There was never time for anything else. It was your life. Yeah, except for maybe session work during the day. But uh, So I found myself, because I always had this hankering to do solo stuff as well, and I always found myself getting incredibly, uh, incredibly frustrated because I'd have all this creative stuff going on but nowhere for it to go. OK, then you went on to do uh, albums with Mushroom. Yeah. I went on, I did a... I went from being this sort of rock hero, loud, bluesy rock hero, guitar player in Chain to doing this sort of wimpy singer-songwriter album called I Wish There Was A Way, which got great reviews but absolutely bombed. Why do you think that was? Because it was oh, so different from the, what people uh, yeah, expected it was just, you to do? Yeah, and it was, it was ill-conceived. It was just, I hadn't thought it, I, I was in this sort of, I don't know, Johnny-come-lately hippie type sort of scenario in my head, I think, you know. But I, I actually find my, my most interesting part of the whole thing was when I did my very first solo album myself. Um, and this was in, uh, must have been about 86, 1986 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I just started, no, about 80, must have been about 87 or 88. I just started working solo with a stomp box uh, and, a, and a guitar. And I went into a little studio in Brisbane and uh, just a bottle of wine next to me, played a set, they recorded it, then I had a break, went back and played a another whole set and repeated some of the stuff, then picked out the best and put out a cassette and, vine and a vinyl album. And uh, What was that called? It was called It's Blues. And it was straight down the line what people sort of actually yeah, but, had but, come but to expect. Acoustic. Yeah, and um, and it sold by the. It just it was unbelievable. It, I sold so many of the cassettes. Not I only had two printed two fifty of the vinyl, and then vinyl just sort of suddenly stopped. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the cassette went on selling for for years. It was just outrageous. Um, can I ask you? I I know that as as Chain and as Phil Manning, um, you have opened for so many amazing oh, yeah. um, acts, overseas acts, and, and, you know, not necessarily that they're that good because they're from overseas, but you have opened for some amazing people. Mm. Who who did you get the biggest kick out of actually being on the same bill as? Or who did you enjoy working with? Um, oh, gee. Gee, that's a hard one. Um, oh, the, the, the best, I toured twice with Muddy Waters, mm -hmm. and he was... By far, uh, the that was that was just an absolute thrill of a lifetime, and probably my greatest thrill on that was at one stage because his band would go on and do a twenty-minute warm-up set, and uh, uh, and one it was in Canberra actually one night uh, just Muddy and myself ended up in the room together, and I was going through a hard time with my first marriage at that stage. And Muddy just seemed to nail it. He just and he lectured me for, for about fifteen minutes about, you know, but what I should do when I'm on the roads. It's just amazing. Really, it was just lovely. We'll take a short break and be back soon. Rock down. Okay, so this is Phil Manning, the Essential Acoustic Collection. So, um, 
This is your latest CD? Yeah. It's a collection of uh, my favourite tracks off the last uh, three or four CDs. And it was actually a bit of a stopgap measure because I'm in the process of doing a new one. And I'm, I, I, because I've got my own studio, I just fuddle around and, do, and just don't get around to doing it. The new one? Yeah, yeah, my new one. So I've got all these songs ready to go. So I put together a collection of my previous ones to, sa uh, to save reprinting all the other ones, really. There's 22 tracks. Yeah, yeah, it's got one new track on it, um, but all, all the other ones are on previous albums. But I like the artwork, too. Um, yeah, my nice. wife does all the photography and the artwork. It's all, all very in-house. It's all we, very in-house. It's recorded in my little studio out in the back shed. And the thing is that um, you could always take your easel out there as well. Oh, I do. And paint mm. instead of watching movies. I do that too. <laughs> I'm just being cheeky. So, um, OK, we've got this one. Out at the moment, the Essentials Acoustic Collection. And, of course, if you're interested in uh, finding out more about that, go to our website, which is www.rockdown.com. Got that out. Um, and you have a new one that you're working on at the moment. Yeah. And also, tell us about your gigs. Well, I've got, I've got a few, oh, basically my solo gigs, which they can be anywhere. That'll be great. And, and then, of course, we've got Chain coming up in September. Um, so who's in? You've still got Matt. Yeah, Matt Taylor's Matt still a singer. Little Goose is Little the drummer. Goose is, yeah. And Dirk Dubois is our bass player. Bass player. player. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So you're going to do Australia wide, or? Uh, we're doing we're doing some shows in New South Wales, uh, and then some down here, and then I'm not sure when we're next going to. Oh, we're going to be doing some shows in Qu Southern Queensland in the beginning of December. But we live all over the place. We just have to fly everyone every, yeah. everywhere. And, beautiful. Uh, okay, now um, you're going to do a beautiful song for us? I'll do one off that album, actually. Which one are you going to do? Oh, I think I'll pick um, Motors Running, which is a pretty short, sweet little song. Track eight, your motor's running. Well, look, I want to say thank you so much for coming on Thanks, the show. Wendy. Um, it's a real, real honour to interview you. And for me, too. Oh, <laughs> gorgeous man. Um, Phil's going to take us out with the motors running and uh, we'll see you next week. See you later. Thank you. Think I'll move side of town Yes, I'm moving to the other side of town I feel much better now that you don't want me around Motor's running Bags are packed, I'm bound to leave Motors running, bags are packed, I'm about to leave. You could change your mind, that is something I could not conceive. I'm moving to some place that you won't know If you want to reach me, you can always call my mobile phone Motor's running, guess I'll be getting on my way Motor's running, guess I'll be getting on my way I feel much better, maybe on a brand new day. I 
I feel much better, maybe 